Okay. So you head to Egypt because you want to see the Great Pyramids of Giza, right? No problem. This is like totally forget about COVID. I'm just saying, I'm at, you know, pre COVID, you head to Egypt, whatever. You go there, you take a look at the pyramids, they let you inside into certain parts, what have you. It's, it's a little bit, you know, it's late afternoon, early evening. You're leaving the pyramid and you're going, wow, you know what? This is a beautiful thing. It's, a, you know, great uh, piece of history, art, uh, structure, you know, you name it, right? And then you look up. Just your gut tells you. You don't hear anything, but you look up. And you see two UFOs, triangle UFOs, by the way, pyramid UFOs hovering above it. You take some pictures. You then say, what the hell is that? You, amongst the other tourists, get very excited, right? Okay. Then you take a bunch of pictures. You take some video that gets very clear video of it. Very rare, very strong, very clear video. You then head back to your hotel. You wake up the next morning, all right? And you get an email or you get a notification that you just got 30 or 40,000 American dollars wired into your bank account personally from an anonymous source. You don't even know who sent the money, which totally goes against banking protocols, but let's let's just hold, bear with me for a second. You then get a call on your phone from an, a blocked caller. You pick up and they say, "Hello, Mr. or Mrs. so and so." We noticed what you saw last night. Here's some money to stay quiet. What do you do? What do you say? Now, before I do that, I know that I, I just want to mention very quickly. I know I have a ton of shout outs to get to. I've been really busy working the, the, the Patreon members only videos and editing and all that. So I do want to mention very quickly for those who don't know, I have a Patreon putting it up on screen right now for those on YouTube, the three different packages. Just want to mention very quickly. I just finished recording our very first members only episode, which is going to be extremely awesome. I encourage you guys to sign up if you can, and I would really appreciate that. Now, moving forward, I promise in the coming days, I'll get to the shout outs. I just need time to get into the swing, into the rhythm of things now that I'm working extra, extra time, like extra, you know, six, seven hours a day now. So, and I really do appreciate that. That's not a, a burden by any means. Let's carry on though. So you get this call, right? And then you get this money and you accept the money and you say, okay, but you're still kind of like flabbergasted. You're still like, what the hell? Long story short, you'll see what I mean. Then you go driving down your highway, but you're back home. You fly back home. You go driving down your highway to work and you get shot at, literally shot at, but you're so confused because the bullets were not even closely aimed for you after you examine where the bullets hit after and you realize it's a warning shot. So essentially, you're being silenced. You've been sent a bunch of money with, with no strings attached and on top of that, your car is shot at, okay? Now, let's take a look. Project Shake. The volcanoes that activate interdimensional ships. What do ships stand for? Ships stand for strategic habilatorial, sorry, or sorry, habilatorial initiation into the parallels. Now, here's what's interesting. The parallel represents something called the nexus. This is what the Nordics and other species refer to as, I guess, what we could call the simulation. That what we would call the simulation. There are multiple nexuses, however. Now, why do we talk about volcanoes? And why is that put in air quotes into the title? Or why is it put into quotes? So, here, let's let's just start nice and easy and let's work our way into it. So, let's take a look at the BBC.com, okay? The massive volcano, all right, that scientists still can't find and still can't explain of what it was responsible for. Now, let's head over to the next article. Mystery Volcano. This is sciencemag.org. Mystery Volcano that cooled the ancient world traced to El Salvador. All right. And by the way, I do want to mention very quickly, what I like about sciencemag.org is that some, not all, but some of the articles published are literally by independent science, uh, scientists that don't take money from corporations, so they're not influenced to say something or to not say something, which I really appreciate and respect, but we have to be vigilant. So, the next thing I want to look at is the 1808 uh, mystery eruption. All right. And according to Wikipedia, and you'll see what I'm talking about here, and I quote, the 1808 mystery eruption was a large volcanic eruption conjectured to have taken place in late 1808, possibly in the southwest Pacific. A VEI-6 eruption comparable to the 1883 eruption of Krakatoa is suspected of having contributed to a period of global cooling that lasted for years. 
analogous to how the 1815 eruption of the Mount Tambora led to the year without a summer in 1816, end quote. Now, this is what's extremely interesting. I want you to keep in mind before I go on that if we take a look here, if we scroll further down to the location and date section of Wikipedia, we'll see here that... Caldas's and Wanway's accounts indicated the existence of a stratospheric aerosol veil spanning at least 2,600 kilometers into both northern and southern hemispheres, end quote. Keep that in mind, 2,600. Do me that favor. So, let's continue on. What we know is that volcanoes emit extremely high radioactive materials from the lava, the molten lava, that everybody knows that. But what's interesting is that what people don't know is the same type of radiation, and I say radiation with air quotes because we don't really have a word as humans to define uh, radiation or certain types of it, so we just classify it as that. The same type of radiation that has come from certain volcanoes that have erupted in the past couple hundred years is the same type of radiation, again, for those on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, air quotes, the same type of radiation that is used to propel all right, some of the UFO technologies, how do I know this? If we take a look at bibliotecaplates.net, what we're going to find is that I did a, an episode a couple weeks back about how President Reagan was briefed, but there was only so much time I had to cover in that episode. I, I could do, I could cover, sorry. If we take a look here and we continue on, what we're going to find is that what President Reagan is briefed by someone named the caretaker, and if you want to find out who that is, just check out the Patreon because I can't really talk about that publicly. The caretaker talks about how the UFOs, all right, are literally using two different propulsion systems. One of them is something classified as radiation and it is not nuclear. Now, it's classified as radiation on a human level because we don't know what it is. But ironically enough, it is the same type of energy, I guess we could call it, because I hate using the word radiation. It's the same type of energy that is used when these volcanoes erupt. Now, like I said, keep the 2600 uh, situation in mind. So, if you take a look at the UFO instance in Te Tehran, all right, where a UFO was seen right above Tehran, okay, in the Middle East, what we're going to find here is that that was not some form of communication. That was a form of activation, okay? This is what a lot of people in the intelligence community would call a coincidental coalition, a coalition of convenience, triple C, all right? And what that does there is that ship being in a certain geographical point activates something within the nexus that encapsulates the different simulated realms that has to do with the Egyptian pyramids, the Chinese pyramids, and the Mexican pyramids that bring in different ships from different dimensions. Now, here's the interesting thing. If we take a look at a classified CIA report from the recently declassified documents, we'll see that there's a report that speculates on a Russian intelligence report. So it is not an American original report. I do want to make that clear. That talks about how exactly 2,600 craft, pyramid-looking craft, spawned, each within its own one-kilometer distance. Now, that's interesting. Where do we know that number 2,600 from? Oh, that's right. The explosion of the 1808 mystery eruption. Could that mystery eruption in 1808 have been a form of activation for certain UFOs to travel interdimensionally through ours and through others, not because they want to travel to ours just to come, but because they want to be able to extract certain elements that they might not be able to take with them because of the way that the cosmos is aligned in a sense that certain elements cannot be brought from one dimension to another, all right? Now, here's the other interesting thing as well. There are certain companies... And again, I'm not trying to, you know, be a salesman here, but this is the beautiful thing about Patreon because I can't mention the companies publicly, but there's certain companies that are collecting people's medical records. Why? Because within the phantom DNA of our pineal gland, believe it or not, there is a certain radiation-like energy that is emitted, okay? That is the same type of energy that matches that of the volcanoes certain volcanoes, and the UFO and, uh, radiation or energy that is emitted in some of these crafts in order for it to, I guess we could say, travel. Not only travel, not fly, not even create or cloak and become invisible or bend gravity, but to transport from one dimension for another. But hold on a second. What does this also tell us? This also tells us, guys, that the pineal gland within the human mind and the body is actually accessible. That's what that tells us. 
Okay, which means that in theory, if we are surrounded in the right environment, we can teleport from one dimension to another the same way these beings do. So clearly there's a reoccurrence here. Now we can argue from the spiritual aspect of it. We could say, okay, listen, yeah, you know, the Vatican and all that and the major uh, institutional religious structures and monarchs of many hundreds, if not thousands of years have suppressed that. We can argue that. But listen, guys, I get it. They've suppressed it. It's done. It's time to move forward and try to expand and wake up again. Okay. The next thing we have to say, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just mean that like I've covered it so much in the past before that I just don't want to get on to the, how, you know, the religious institutions have in a lot of ways exploited us right so let's move on now the next thing that's also interesting is that when we take a look at some of the different instances within the transcript here between reagan and the quote-unquote the caretaker we're gonna see that there's certain things that are brought up that the cia did not brief the caretaker on so how did the caretaker know about that not only that by the way but when we look at some of the pictures, because I'm putting them up on the screen for you guys right now, of some of the UFO pyramid-like ships that are hovering around the pyramids in Egypt, they're starkly similar, but they only appear after a mysterious volcano eruption every single time. Good luck sighting a triangular pyramid three-dimensional UFO ship unless there's been a, a, volcano, a volcanic eruption. Good luck. I'll tell you right now, I've spoken to many witnesses, old and young. I've done hours of research on this. I have yet to find a correlation where a volcano doesn't erupt and then a pyramid UFO appears with, over top or around the Mexican, Chinese, or Egyptian pyramids. Now, what's interesting is the Chinese keep things very secret. So maybe the Chinese have agreed and ha are doing some type of deal or some type of contractual arrangement similar to that of President Eisenhower in 1954 with the Griotta Treaty to be able to say, okay, you give us certain technologies, what have you, you can do what you want. And we're, as long as our earth is fine and still inhabitable and we don't lose any da or um, become damaged in any way, in any form, literally, physically, spiritually, you name it those volcanoes can erupt, right? Now, the question then becomes, what is causing the volcanoes to erupt? Who, here's the thing. There is evidence to suggest that HARP is causing this, which explains why the European Commission and Council, as well as the United Nations, said right away that they expressed serious concerns about HARP, and they also talked about how they wanted it shut down, or at the very least, and this was under Obama, by the way, at the very least, they wanted it to be restricted to that within just American experiments and American geological territory alone. Okay, now the next thing I want to talk about here too is that the 1808 explosion, okay, and I said before, spanned 2,600 kilometers, but this is what gets even better. The 2,600 kilometers is the same number of ships accounted for, not just, by the way, in the reports of the, the CIA declassified reports speculating on a Russian report, but it's the same amount of ships that were cited shortly after a volcanic eruption in the Project Blue Book files. And it's public, by the way. And these are the same types of ships that were cited. Now, a lot of it, if you take a look, is redacted. Granted, I'll give it that. But clearly, guys, clearly we're on to something here. Now, I'm not saying... Excuse me. I'm not saying that volcanoes need to erupt in order for UFOs to get here. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it seems like certain UFOs that are on a very specific objective of extracting very particular elements or maybe biological things or maybe even human beings or animals need volcanoes to erupt to emit the same type of radiation that occurs that some of the, that is utilized by some of these UFO propellants. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is that one thing we'll notice too is that based on my research, what we're going to find here is that there's two types of propulsion systems, if we want to call it that, or anti-gravity systems that these UFO crafts use. Not two separate types in the way I was just discussing, but in the way that it encapsulates one another and it's a subversive system. And what I mean by that is this. When these ships leave the atmosphere of not just Earth, but any certain planet, the ships automatically detect a magnitude and gravitational reach that then deactivates a certain propulsion system that needs to work within an atmosphere of a planet. Okay, now, what's also interesting is that when the ship leaves, when UFOs leave the planet, their propulsion system switches to something else. Now, we don't know what type of energy that is. However, 
What we do know is that it emits very, very similar electromagnetic frequencies that are emitted, all right, in the same way that volcanic lightning is. Now, what is volcanic lightning? Very quickly, and I quote, volcanic lightning, according to Wikipedia, is an electrical discharge caused by a volcanic eruption rather than an ordinary thunderstorm. Volcanic lightning arises from colliding, fragmenting particles of volcanic ash and sometimes ice, which generates static electricity within the volcanic plume, leading to the name Dirty Thunderstorm. End quote. Now, there's a lot more we can cover on that. But do you see the similarities? There's a big, big similar. There's a massive similarities here, guys. Huge. Okay, so I, I want you guys to let me know what you think. I haven't caught on just yet as to what the volcanic lightning discharge energy might be. But clearly there is a resemblance. Clearly these beings, these extraterrestrials, not saying they're bad, not saying they're good. They need this type of, not volcano, not lava. They need this type of radiation as we call it in order to function in many different ways. Maybe not in every way, but in certain ways. So let me know what you guys think. And again, we'll catch you guys uh, tomorrow. Cheers.